I'm this year's problem. I'm Ben. I'm Simeon. Let's go. This is this week's episode. Um, all right. Um, I had questions for you from worker to boss about how you got to where you are today and okay. like how you started your company sort of to help me and anyone else figure out just some inspiration and idea on how they could do it. Yeah. Specifically how I could do it. All right. Fire away. All right. Um, so when did you decide you wanted to do, you wanted to ha start a landscaping company and what made you decide that's what you wanted to do? Equipment probably. Like seeing all the mowers and the, the, the bobcats, the excavators, everything. Okay. I mean, the, the one memory is like, you know, riding back in the minivan with my, uh, my mom was driving, my best friend, see the mowing crew in the truck and think how cool that would be to do our own thing. Yeah. So why why landscaping? Why not just like a lawn care? Uh, I did the lawn care for a little bit, but it just got too oh, okay. um, too boring. So we moved over to construction, doing all, all the projects and everything. Okay. What was it like starting uh, a lawn care company? What what sort of things went into starting that from zero experience to, to upgrading? I mean, mowing's pretty easily, pretty, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Most people should be able to do it. So I would say it's more about like, um, having the courage to go knock on doors and build your customer, your customer base, and gain more people to, to go do the service for. Okay, I know. Um, I I got a couple jobs earlier power washing, and I know, I have no experience doing that myself. And I'd agree that the biggest thing was just knocking on the person's door and saying, "Here's the amount that you owe me. You can write me a check." It was sort of awkward asking for money at mm -hmm. first. Um, how how did you handle that? How, how, how long do you think it took knocking on doors before you became comfortable with it and it wasn't a big deal? Never really had a problem with it, just... Really? Never had a problem collecting, I mean, never really had a problem collecting money, everyone always paid, never had no one not pay. Okay. So I just never really had that problem or the awkwardness that some people seem to have. If you were to describe your business, I mean, obviously it's a landscaping company, but if you were to give specific things that we do, that you wanted to advertise over other things. Like, I mean, I, I know from working with you that we go everywhere from weeding garden beds to building patios to fence posts to fences. I mean, we do it all. But if you were to give three or four or five things specifically that we specialize in, what do you think you would say those are? It's definitely gonna be uh, your patios and uh, retaining walls. A lot, okay. of, a lot of more of the stone work, moving boulders, kind of setting them in place. A little more of that masonry stuff. Okay. Where I think a little more heavy, heavy equipment, a little more skill. Okay. Um, and masonry stuff, that's, I mean, that's harder. Like you said, mowing is easy. Like everyone can do that. Yeah. But masonry stuff, that's a skill. You... It, it's pretty much a trade. Right. Did you go anywhere or do any schooling to learn? I did a trade school briefly, just for a year. Okay. Um, that was for general landscaping, so like mowing, plants, a little bit of pavers. Okay. Kind of everything, a little bit of equipment operation. That was pretty cool. Um, it wasn't really meant for me, though. I kind of I stopped after about a year, uh, just to move on and keep doing my business full time. Do you think that was beneficial? Uh, for me, yes. Instead of wasting more time going to school, just go do my own thing. Okay. Do you think you would have learned faster maybe working for a landscaping company first, or do you think going to the trade school was the fastest route there? In retrospect, I think going to trades, um, I wouldn't have learned more working for another company. I don't think. Okay. Because um, you just. Do you I mean I mean I, already, I was already doing the work other landscape companies are doing, so there's no reason for me to go work for a company if I'm already doing what they're doing. Okay, that's just kind of my opinion, and I don't really like I like doing my own thing, so I don't want to work for someone else. I think when you were starting your company and first building up clientele and hiring employees, what do you think the biggest challenge was overall? Uh, it's more finding work, finding work than um, finding people to do the work. Really? Yeah. Because I, I keep hearing, um, and you know I follow Tigran on Instagram, mm -hmm. and the big thing that he's always talking about is how difficult it was to find workers who would do the work for him and do it the way he wanted and were reliable. Um, that's interesting that you think it, it was harder to actually find the jobs to do. Yeah, it's harder to find the work. I mean, there's always people that can do the work that may not be the best, though. Okay. I mean, over a long time, yeah, it's harder to find good people. But short term, um, people are a dime a dozen. What were the first few big jobs that you did? Oh, uh, just a few, few patios. Okay. Was were, are there any that like you remember specifically that was like a maybe like a milestone? Like oh, this is like the first, you know, patio of this size or cost this much or something. 
Not exactly, just like how long they like the first one of the ones we did just took way too long. Okay. So just like kind of thing forever. Not really huge milestones, I would say. Okay. Um, business wise. All right. Um. Now that you've been and you've you've been running the landscaping company for how long now? Six years. Six years. Okay. Um. Now that you're like into it and the company's going, how do you sort of stay? up to date and in the loop with like what all the other landscaping companies are doing i mean you really don't have to there's no reason to does are, are there ever any like i don't want to say trends but things that other companies are doing that maybe you would want to know about or that you would want to be able to um offer on top of everything else you do you mean like service wise or you mean like yeah or i mean you know if they're ever doing anything that's I, I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm thinking more if there's ever any new tools or new styles of patios that people are building or new kinds of pavers. Yeah, I mean, I there's, always, there's always that kind of stuff coming out, but, I mean, you don't really need to learn from another landscaper to, to do that stuff. It's just out there. You just figure it out in your own? Yeah. Okay, okay. Are there any things like that that, I don't know, that come across with maybe one or two landscaping companies and then, like, everyone else starts doing them also, other than just services? Not really, it's, it's not really like a network you, like you seem to kind of think, it's more. Everybody's on more your, just a couple, yeah. of, like it's on your specific own. jobs, okay. Do it yourself, like, like I hate people who don't know how to price. I figure it out, like figure it out, grow up. You know, some people just don't know how to like charge. Go asking me the questions, figure it out, because I figured it out as a 16 year old. You know, you're like 25, figure it out. It's not that hard. So Some how people do, feel like it's this hard thing. It's not, and I can't figure out your own price. God, how fast you guys work, or like what you guys have. So like, figure out your own price. Quit asking people what you what you should be charging. It's not that hard. Figure it out. So you don't you don't think it's beneficial overall for like landscaping companies to check in with what other people are charging for the same job. I mean, you you can, but I mean, no landscaping company is going to tell you what they're charging for a patio. I guess. I guess. I didn't think of that. I don't know. I, I, I look at it. Like, I asked you what, what you would charge for a power washing job before I went and started giving quotes on power washing jobs. Yeah, but I mean, like, really, it's not that. You, you, you could figure it out. I guess. Just see who says no to certain jobs and who says yes, and then figure out sort of what prices are acceptable. Well, you figure out how long it's going to take you and how much money you want to make. Okay, fair enough. How long, how long did it take you to really figure out how to price things? Not that long. I mean, just pretty much figure out how much something cost. How long it would take me to do it, and then just the price. How do you price out your labor? Like with power washing, there's not a whole lot of material. I mean, I've already paid paid back the power mm-hmm. washer double. I mean, I made that back the first power washing job I did. Now it's just gas. So, I mean, how do you figure out how you want to price your own time? When you power wash on job, you should know how long it takes you to power wash a square concrete. Right. So you should know how, to, how long it takes you to power wash anything else from now on out. Right, but how, how do I decide, I mean, if it takes me 10 minutes to power wash a square of concrete, what, what gives you the, the guideline of how much is 10 minutes worth? How much do you want to make? Okay, it's just, it's just dependent yeah. on how much you're looking for. How much you want to make? How much is reasonable? How much is someone willing to pay? Right. It's, like, it's not that hard. Like, you, know, you, know, you know how long it takes you to do 10 minutes of concrete work? You know, here's how much you charge. It's like when you other than just knocking on people's doors what were your first marketing things that you did it was really just knocking on doors that was it you didn't do any kind of advertising not till later on when i was um 17 18 i advertised on a uh, home advisor for a little bit okay and then from there i kind of stopped advertising altogether uh, just knocking on doors and people would give you referrals okay and then uh a year or two ago i tried facebook which works pretty well St- i still do that and then now I advertise on Angie and Facebook. Okay. Um, do you think you got more work when you were knocking on doors than you do now advertising on Facebook and Angie? No, I've got more work now. Okay. Do you think maybe you're, you think maybe even though you're getting more people to contract you and say yes to your jobs, do you think your name is getting out there a little less because you're interacting with fewer people? Do you think that costs you at all? How I'm interacting with more people. How to be interacting with fewer people? Thinking if, if you go, 
if you're in a neighborhood and you go from one door all the way down and you go around the neighborhood and you knock on 200 mm -hmm. doors, that's 200 people you've interacted with. They know of Buckingham Gardens. They know who Ben is. They know what kind of things they offer. Uh, right, let's say you knock on 200. Say you knock on 200 doors. Right. Let's say half the people are home. Okay, that's okay. fair. Uh, let's say another chunk doesn't care, so they're not even gonna listen to you. They're gonna close the door. Right. And then another chunk says no, and then another chunk actually says yes. And that one, the chunk that says yes, is like one percent or less. So, after two hundred doors, twenty people might care. At most. Okay. That's like maximum. Otherwise, you you get way better reach on Facebook. So um, even just having people know of your company, I mean, there aren't enough people when you knock on doors to really make that big of a dent. No, knowing of your company does not matter. It doesn't make a difference? Okay. No. You don't ever get people, like customers, that call and ask for a job because their friend knew of your company or something? That doesn't happen? I mean, we, we, some people will call because they, their friend told them about us. But is that usually like a for, their friend is a former customer? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Um, who, who are our most common customers? Uh, I'd say people in the, between 40 and 60. Mm -hmm. um, you usually have to be a homeowner. Okay. Um, at least. Do you, do you get a lot of corporate jobs, like companies or uh, do you ever have any, like, apartment complex or anything like that? A handful each year. Okay. And is that, is that more, I, I would assume that would be more lawn care related than it would be, like, a big patio job or something. Is that right? Um, no, that would be more clean up. Or maintenance, or removing trees, or something. Okay. So um, we, we don't do any lawn care. So. Oh, at all? No. Oh, okay. No, if someone calls me to mow their grass once, I'm not going to mow it. Really? What made you stop doing that altogether? It's just frustrating and annoying to mow grass. Okay. It's a waste of time. Okay. It's a waste of time to spend two, three hours to get 60 bucks. Okay. So just the return on? Yeah, there's no return. Okay. Compared to building patios and... Doing tree yeah, removal, I mean, right? We bring in a lot more money doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Have, do you ever get feedback from customers directly? I mean, like reading reviews online, or do you ever have customers contact you later about the job that you did? Yeah, we usually ask most of them to leave a review online. What what are, what's what's the feedback generally? Positive. It is. Do you ever have yeah. like negative feedback that you follow up with? There's been a few. I mean, they're just they're just negative. We didn't agree. Were there, were there any jobs that you were, you can remember doing that they had a legitimate complaint and you actually maybe realized that you could have done a better job or maybe you something broke or something uh, where there was an actual problem? Yeah, of course. I mean, it happens. Any that you can talk about? I'm I mean, curious. there's nothing really serious. There's nothing really there. Like, Just? It's like the, they wanted the payers to be a little different or something. Okay. There's nothing really, it's nothing noteworthy. Does anything ever happen where, what, what, like, what do you do if a customer's not satisfied with their patio? Like, no, well, they're the ones who chose everything, so it's up to them. So, oh, okay, so you just make sure that yeah. they choose all the paper types before. Yeah, we're know. not choosing anything for them. They, 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 you ever have someone, like, want a refund or want you to redo it afterwards? No. No? No, like, no. Karens? I mean, generally people are angry because someone cut the internet cable. No. I really ruined someone's day. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, most recently we had someone, one of the workers cut an internet cable and uh, the lady had to leave her house to go do a meeting that she could have done from home. Oh. Uh, and, you know, that kind of, like, wasn't really, didn't really make her day easier. Right. Ever thought of, like, getting a mascot for the company? Who would be our mascot? We don't have a, we don't have an animal name. I don't know. I, it's Buckingham Gardens. What do you do? Have a, a garden? A tomato? I, I have no idea. No, it'd be, it'd be I, cool, though, having a mascot, don't you think? I'd never have a mascot. Why? It's cheesy. You think so? Yeah. I, don't know, I feel like that's that's such a big thing. I mean, no, for the, sports, I, you go to a game, and I feel like it's it's just iconic. Yeah, because they've been around for a hundred years. See, but does that make them less cheesy? No, they're still pretty cheesy. I don't know. I don't find it. I kind of like them. I don't like them. Huh. Interesting. How'd you come up with the logo? Um, went on Fiverr, told ten different people what I wanted. And chose the one we liked the most. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So there wasn't any, like, specific aspects of it that no, you had chosen? No, I told them, like, the name, what we do, and then 
come up with something. Came up with that one. It's been the, it's the best, so probably going to keep it for quite a while. Yeah, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't really change it. Yeah, I don't think there's a point. Like, Karen's or someone freak out over something that happened? Yeah, there's been some. Okay. How do you um, handle that, generally? There's not much you can do. Just kind of fix the problem. Nod and smile? Yeah. Sort of? Okay. Sometimes I'm not the fan of the customer, and I won't take the payment because... I don't want to deal with them. Right. So maybe like on a, we may have done the job like just about three quarters of the way, and I, I pretty much so there's one job I pretty much finished the job. Yeah. They just free to paper area, but she wanted me to redo these stones too, that wasn't included. Okay. And I don't want to go back down and do it, but she kept calling and calling. I didn't take payment. I didn't even want the payment. So I, I eventually went down there and fixed these stones, and then just left. I don't want to deal with her or even talk to her. I don't like her. I've seen these, like, the TikToks of where someone doesn't pay so they dump, like, mulch in their driveway or something. Yeah. So. I mean, I would do that. Wouldn't? I would. If I so you there. would? Really? If someone wouldn't pay, I'd totally do it. Okay. How, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I'd just go <laughs>